Though it's easy to argue that gaming has never been better, loot boxes, platforms for content, and post-launch microtransactions notwithstanding, for every game that gets into your hands, there are dozens set in motion that never fully see the light of day. Due to a myriad of reasons specific to each project, ranging from creative clashes to publisher whims canning the whole thing because a formerly bankable trend won't work anymore, well, I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are eight announced video games that are never coming out. Also, every time we do a list like this, something tends to actually then come out. If you have a favourite title, maybe keep those fingers crossed as we get through the list. Number 8. Deep Down First announced at Sony's famed 2013 PlayStation meeting, the very same day they unveiled the PS4 that February, Deep Down is a co-op dungeon crawler in development from Capcom, with inevitable comparisons made to the Dark Souls series, albeit without that punishing difficulty. The game certainly left an impression when it debuted, but after it was revealed to be a free-to-play title, word about Deep Down quickly petered out. In 2015, producer Kazunori Sugiura claimed that the project's scope had expanded significantly from those original plans, in the hope of capturing a loyal base of fans who will keep returning to the game. Deep Down subreddit, though, is a pretty depressing sight after almost a decade of inactivity. Producer Yoshinori Ono said the game hadn't been given up on in 2019, and then he left Capcom in 2020. As a really cool-looking game, Deep Down has left desperate fans forever crossing their fingers for it to be reintroduced at any gaming event. Number 7. Shadow of the Eternals – Eternal Darkness' sequel First announced on the 3rd of May 2013, a collective of developers who worked on the original GameCube Eternal Darkness celebrated the sequel's existence, alongside a crowdfunding campaign. Though survival horror masterpiece Eternal Darkness was one of the GameCube's best-reviewed titles, it sold fewer than 500,000 units and was considered a flop. Shadow of the Eternals, though, just might be a cursed game. Barely a month after the crowdfunding campaign began, the game's co-designer Kenneth McCullough was arrested and jailed, and by September 2013, it had failed to reach its funding goal twice, despite the original game's cult fandom. In late 2014, director Dennis Dyer created a new company to resume development, but after that, word went quiet until 2016, when Dyer resurfaced with renewed resolve to get it made. To this day, though, nothing substantial has actually been heard. Number 6. Beyond Good and Evil 2 Former director Michelle Oncel first confirmed the pre-production had begun on a sequel to this cult action adventure in May 2008, though after years of mixed messages and back and forths, Beyond Good and Evil 2's development was formally confirmed by Ubisoft on the 6th of October 2016. Though it's been great to see a glossy cinematic trailer and a tech demo so far, Ancel full-on left the games industry in September 2020, though even when he was still on the project, he described the title's ambitious online shared world components as being at day zero in terms of actually figuring out how any of it was going to work. It's worth noting that Beyond Good and Evil 2 started being talked about again during Vivendi's attempted hostile takeover of Ubisoft between the years of 2016 and 2018, something they did manage to stave off by greenlighting wishlist projects like this, though at least in my eyes there was never any real plan to follow through. Number 5. Tekken Cross Street Fighter this crossover beat-em-up was first confirmed at 2010's San Diego Comic-Con. The first game in a supposed series, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, was announced at the same time, and eventually came out in March 2012, using the Street Fighter engine. The follow-up would flip everything by injecting Street Fighter characters into the Tekken engine, but to this day, it's stuck in development hell. Tekken series director Katsuhiro Harada noted in 2021, We are still hopeful that Tekken Cross Street Fighter will resume development when the opportunity arises. This was said as a follow-up to a mis translation that the game was dead, as instead Harada had said that it was shelved and on pause. Katsuhiro noted that such an important title comes with a huge marketing and branding push from both Namco and Capcom, affecting both sides' development resources simultaneously. Obviously, that was also the case for Street Fighter Cross Tekken, but it's worth noting that the first game only sold 40% of its projected units in those first two months. Harada is essentially saying the game is ready whenever it makes sense, as another interview in 2016 noted that core gameplay systems have been fully assembled. Thankfully, Tekken 7 gave us a glimpse into what a Tekken engine Street Fighter would actually play like with its awesome inclusion of Akuma, though it makes you wonder, is this as far as the idea can be taken following a sales flop and so much risk surrounding another roll of the dice? Number 4. Agent Though murmurs of the game's development had persisted for several years prior, Rockstar finally confirmed Agent's existence back at E3 2009. Rockstar originally stated this stealth action spy game could be the next GTA, and would hit stores sometime in 2010. However, this came and went, and word got quiet on Agent shortly after. Take-Two renewed the Agent trademark in mid-2013, and again in late 2016, but after that it's been years of inactivity and zero updates. 
October 2021 saw Rockstar finally, and very quietly, remove the agent name from their website after 12 years, somewhat closing the book on this, but not in any wider capacity. Honestly, it just sucks. Polygon's behind-the-scenes report in 2019 had Rockstar devs describing a version of the game that featured a car that turned into a submarine. And Sam Hauser had initially referred to the possibilities of this spy-themed sandbox as the ultimate action game. You can see some of the wackier Bond car style designs in GTA Online, a somewhat on-the-nose metaphor for where Rockstar's priorities truly are. Number 3, Half-Life 2, Episode 3. The trilogy of Half-Life 2's episodic spin-off adventures were originally confirmed in February 2006, almost 18 months after Half-Life 2 was first released. After Episode 1 and 2 released in June 2006 and October 2007, the latter ending on a monumentally important cliffhanger, Episode 3 quickly became infamous in its failure to arrive within the next year or even before the close of the decade. Soon after, Valve became increasingly cagey about discussing Episode 3, and although we did get some devs opening up while marketing Half-Life Alex, the rollout of this clearly planned story is just strange. Looking back, the reason Half-Life 3 confirmed became such a meme was precisely because fans could only speculate. A full-fat Half-Life 3 was assumed to be the case rather than something episodic, but by 2017, three key writers for the series had left Valve. One, Mark Laidlaw, made a blog post that appeared to be a thinly veiled plot dump of either Episode 3, Half-Life 3, or whatever was in the works before he left. This prompted the ongoing development of fan game Project Borealis, something that's attempting to just make Half-Life 2 Episode 3 using Laidlaw's outline as a guide. Mark's post was widely interpreted as him attempting to provide closure for fans and himself, this plot dump being accepted because clearly Episode 3 isn't ever coming in its correct form. Again, we've had the phenomenal Half-Life Alex, and where that game ends is right back into Half-Life 2 Episode 2 territory, but it's far more likely that the closure fans have wanted for over a decade requires buying a VR headset to actually see. Number 2, Dead Island 2. First announced at Sony's E3 conference in 2014, Dead Island 2 has had an infamously rough production history, with the first game's developers Techland opting to work on Dying Light instead of a sequel. Dying Light 2 would then have a protracted, hellacious development cycle too, but it's thankfully one of 2022's most enjoyable AAA titles. For Dead Island 2 then, the baton was passed to Jaeger Development from Spec Ops The Line, aiming for a Q2 2015 release. When that deadline hit, however, Jaeger were removed from the project due to disagreements with publisher Deep Silver, who replaced them with Sumo Digital in March 2016. Three years later, new publisher THQ Nordic would remove Sumo and give the project to Homefront the Revolution developers Dambuster, where it still sits today. It must be factored in just how messy these transitions can be. Any handover requires a lot of nuance across all design departments, and with Dead Island's reputation already being quite spotty, needing a sequel to knock it out the park, it's likely this just gets canned so many people can move on with their lives. 2020 saw a leaked build of the game appear online, at least showing that something had come together through all of this mess, but with Back for Blood proving that zombie fatigue is right around the corner if you don't get things right, I wouldn't hold your breath. And number 1, The Longest Journey Home. This was originally revealed as a Kickstarter stretch goal for Dreamfall Chapters in 2013. Though the $2 million goal was never reached, falling $500,000 short, franchise director Ragnar Tornquist still expressed a desire to get the game made. For whatever reason though, unfortunately for fans, he changed his tune significantly mid-2016, instead tweeting that the longest journey home will probably never happen, at least not for a long, long time. Ragnar followed up on a fan forum saying, We dearly love this saga, and part of me would love to jump into the last journey home to tell a personal and soulful story about a character I care deeply about, but for many, many reasons, I don't think it will happen. While there still hasn't been any official cancellation, it's fair to say that most fans of the series have given up hope on ever getting this anticipated game, which really, really sucks. And those are just 8 announced video games that clearly aren't ever coming out. Let me know which ones you are looking forward to the most down in the comments, and maybe we can will something into existence if we believe hard enough. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.